what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Pixel Extended ROM version 4.7 of course this is based on Android 12.1 or Android 12 L and this is the 8th July 2022 build first things first let me clear it up that this ROM is kind of simplistic and it's gonna be really familiar to the other Android 12 L ROMs but it has a lot less features when you compare it with the most advanced kind of ROM I would say that is like Evolution X yes the features of the Pixel Extended will be feeling a little limited but this ROM is no way it's bad or something it's a really good ROM I would say but yes this ROM does not excel Evolution X ROM in any way I feel it that way so first of all let me begin with the stock launcher of course you are getting the Pixel launcher over here and if you tap and hold on a particular area it will look like this and yes it looks beautiful in the like home screen and stuff and the widgets are there the android 12 l kind of clock widgets and stuff you will get all those no issues whatsoever with those in the home screen settings you will only get this kind of settings you can disable the suggestions if you want to but there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen but this clock widget animations and stuff are working fine and even here if you are noticing the clock widget is working perfectly fine here no problems whatsoever subscriber account widget that too is working fine to the left of the home screen we get the google's discover page and yes it's smooth enough swiping up gets you to the app drawer and swiping down gets you to the quick setting panel and once you expand it this is how the quick setting panel looks like because i have changed a customization in the settings but i'll show you that but let me tell you that here you will only get the 60 fps right out of the box you don't get that 72 hertz mod that you get with the evolution x out of the box those kind of things are not there this is a pretty like normal kind of android 12 rom so yeah it's not the display is not overclocked in this particular rom now talking about the stock camera yes it has still the older kind of google camera and yes it doesn't feel good i did not even open it as you can see this is how the ui looks like pretty basic camera so that's why i have installed a g cam this is the mgc latest g cam over here works perfectly fine we have the 2x and 1x zoom over here even in the video settings we have the 4k 30 60 etc options and the full hd 60 30 etc options and of course in this like particular camera it's really good that you can switch the microphones if you want to as you can see right now i have connected to this bluetooth device i can switch to the bluetooth audio or bluetooth mic over here this is a really good feature and we have this portrait mode and stuff even the front camera if you're willing to see as you are noticing the front camera is working fine that's like a little bit cropped up but yeah i would say it's a really good kind of camera and it takes very really detailed pictures in the night sight mode there is night sight working perfectly fine shutter speed and stuff let me actually click a couple of pictures as you can see the shutter speed is really fast no problems whatsoever that i have faced with the shutter speed here is how the pictures will look like the colors are very detailed no problems whatsoever with the camera quality with this particular g cam but of course if you want to install anix camera and stuff guide for that will be listed in the description but i haven't tested personally the anix camera over here i'm not sure if that will work or not talking about the android version section this is how it looks like we have this beautiful pixel extended animation right here once you go into the about section looks beautiful the logo is perfectly great and android version shows as android 12 the extended version shows as 4.7 the device maintainer is ralph prime 79 and we have the july security patch the latest one as of right now and we have this 4.14 english use kernel and here is the build number or the build date in the system settings we do have a system updater and from here you can check for updates whenever there is a new update if you want to clean flash this rom you can check out the guide from the description but if you're on the same build of this rom you can just dirty flash it if you're decrypted just flash the rom file and the disable force encrypt that should work perfectly fine here and again the flashing guides will be listed in the description do not worry we have the gesture settings the quick tap or the back tap actions are there and yes they should be working perfectly fine here if you are willing to use those quickly open camera is there then we have the system nav gesture settings and in the settings we have the swipe to invoke assistant that should be working fine as you are noticing and we have the left edge right edge customization the haptic feedback the full screen gestures and even the advanced gestures are there but again there is no pill length or the pill bar thickness customization over here let me go back we have the two button and three button navigations one handed mode is there that should be working fine i guess and as you can see it's working and we have the press and hold power button action you can customize that the swipe to take a screenshot is there and there's the share and edit option but if you want to delete it you can go into the edit then delete it from right here 
and we have the double tap and the prevent ringing option but this double tap is not the like double tap to sleep or something that's there in the customization settings which i'll show you later on in the pop-up camera settings we have the camera led the front camera raised dialogue the sound effects and the calibration for the front camera which is motorized Right now let's talk about the quick setting panel. This is how it looks like. I have added a lot of toggles and here you can edit and add multiple toggles that you are willing to. But let me show you which toggles that I have added. Of course the Wi-Fi is there, mobile data is disabled because I don't have a SIM card in the device. Like whenever you are connected to a Bluetooth device, it will show up in the status bar just like this. If you're noticing that Bluetooth battery icon you can see right there. Also in the quick setting panel, it shows the battery percentage for the Bluetooth device that you have connected. Also the dark theme is there and the auto rate night light and we have the hotspot, flashlight, etc. options. Then we have the always on display toggling option and here there is no always on display for charging only over here. Screen recorder is also there and you can record the device audio and microphone audio both at the same time. The battery saver, the do not disturb, data saver, Google home controls. Extra dim feature is there, the sound toggle is there and this is how the volume panel looks like again and as you can see the animations looks beautiful and here this toggle is working fine if you're noticing. Let me show you one more time. Animations are beautiful once you are trying to switch the output device. So yeah, really good animations everywhere. We have the de-streaming right here again and the reboot toggle is there so you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. The high brightness toggle is there, it works fine. The calculator toggle I have added and this is how the FPS info will appear. As you can see if you enable the FPS info, it shows up the FPS on the top left of the screen. Looks beautiful. And we also have the brightness slider, the auto brightness button and the power menu appears just like this. You can have the directly rebooting option to recovery or fast boot or the advanced reboot is there. You shouldn't worry about that. In the settings panel, this is how it looks like. In the snow house, you will get all the customizations of the UI and it's divided between the status bar, then lock screen, then system and the hardware settings. Here you will find a lot of customization. I'm not going to show you all of them, but yes, these are the settings that you will get. And here, let me actually show you, there is the double tap to sleep. Don't forget to like actually enable it here in the status bar. Just scroll down a little bit. Enable this double tap to sleep. Otherwise, your double tap to sleep on the status bar will not work. There is no separate gesture kind of settings over here in the customization, which I do miss. And here we have the quick setting transparency and stuff. Then the brightness slider position you can change. Then we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen and the lock screen charging info, the small clock, the ripple effect. Also the UDFPS icons and stuff are there and there is the UDFPS icon picker. Here are the icons that you will get for the few minute scanner. I'll show you the few minute scanner speed later on. Also the animations you are getting over here. Lot of animations are there, no complaints regarding the animations and stuff of the few minute scanner. The screen of A4D is also there, that works fine. And we have the system nav bar and here it shows take your pill if you're noticing. But yes, you can't really take your pill over here because there is no like size customization for the pill bar I feel. And the monitor theme engine is there, we have this color customization. Then font styles are there and you can actually see which fonts looks like what. And yes, there are plethora of font customization, no problems about that. The game space or the gaming mode is there, you can add any particular game that you are willing to. In call vibration options are there and we have this annoying notification, wake up on plug, pocket detection, etc. The power menu customization is there, advanced reboot can be enabled from here. Long press power button, toggle torches there, then if you scroll down more, we have this fingerprint vibration options. That's it regarding the customizations. In the battery settings, yes, I do miss that it doesn't show even the battery percentage over here or you're not even getting those like charging cycle and stuff. Those things are simply not here. So you can't really see the battery health or the charging cycle or the battery temperature from this battery settings. Very basic, I would say, when you compare it to a ROM like Evolution X, I would say. The battery life has been decent. I have been getting about seven hours of screen on time on average but yes if your battery is old with heavy or like moderate usage it will give you about five to six hours of screen on time generally speaking so if you haven't replaced your battery the battery life will be decent five to six hours of screen on time it's not bad at all in the health section as you can see my battery's health is about 69 percent here it shows so yeah the battery life is decent no complaints regarding that also the fast charging works fine no issues whatsoever with that but i do miss that once i plug in the device it doesn't actually show the like battery percentage on the middle of the screen uh, that is a feature of android 12 but that simply doesn't appear over here it just shows a floating animation of the charging but it doesn't show the percentage in the middle in the sound and vibration settings we have this media call etc volume controls and again this is how the volume panel appears and we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option if you scroll down more we have this vibrate to indicate call status the me sound enhancer is there the sound quality with the headphone jack and bluetooth was great and you can choose between all these presets then we have the hi-fi audio option and stuff then if you scroll down more we have this clear speaker option and stuff 
and here we have the display settings the brightness level the lock screen customizations are there and we have the dark theme then we scroll down more we have the colors you can change it to saturated boosted etc double tap to wake is there and in the custom display settings we have the descending and the high brightness mode that's the outdoor brightness settings it makes the display really bright i would say in the wallpapers and styles we have this change wallpaper option you'll get this living universe and stuff if you are looking for those live wallpapers yes they are there let me go back we have the dark theme the themed icons app grid etc right now let's talk about the security settings this is how it looks like and in the settings of it we get the quick unlock that's really good but for some reason here we get this fingerprint behavior this option will be present for most devices which has a button fingerprint scanner like on the side like the redmi note 10 pro and stuff but for some reason i don't know why it's like appearing over here fingerprint on the display so it should not be there i feel but yeah this is how it is right now let me talk about the advanced settings and in here we have the stock lock options and in here we get the app lock and let me actually show you inside the app lock you can lock any particular app that you are willing to google photos and stuff are there i have locked particular apps i'll show you that but here we have this auto lock timeout and the collapse notification options then of course we have the face unlock and the fingerprint let me actually set up the face unlock quickly and in the face unlock it does not give you option to actually have that swipe up or like just go into the lock screen mode and in here i have added two fingerprints so right now i'm going to show you the fingerprint scanner speed and the face unlock and the app lock first of all let me just double tap on the status bar and as you can see this is how the always on display looks like it looks beautiful let's see if the double tap to wake works and yes double tap to wake is working fine no issues whatsoever with that and here if i tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks pretty fine and it's really fast if you're noticing up close as you can see the fingerprint scanner is not a problem whatsoever all right so it just went to the weather for some reason let me try one more time with my left hand thumb and as you can see it has unlocked so yeah no problems with the fingerprint scanner right now i'm gonna be trying the face unlock and here if i swipe up from the lock screen as you can see it shows recognizing face and it has unlocked so yeah the face unlock speed is pretty fine too so yes, I would say in terms of unlocking or locking, the face unlock fingerprint both are working fine. Also, if you want to see the app lock, this is how the UI looks like of the app lock. You can touch the fingerprint scanner or use pin. I'm going to just touch the fingerprint scanner. And as you can see, it has unlocked the Relicrum app. If you're wondering about the basic things, yes, safety net passes right out of the box here. You shouldn't be worrying of using the banking apps over here on this ROM. Also, the DRM info stays as L1 here, if you're noticing. So it should not be a problem with streaming Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. Now talking about the like fluidity of the ROM, I would say yes, it's a really good experience overall and yes, the scrolling is fine but yes, 60Hz is not noticeable if you're switching from a ROM like Evolution X, yes, it definitely feels a little slower overall in the UI but I would say it's decent and here if you are going to use the split top mode, that too should be working perfectly fine here, no problems with the split top as you can see, scrolling and stuff is working fine and you can go into the home screen. Then you can go into the recent panel both the apps stays together as you are noticing and you can also scale these apps if you want to so i would say yes the overall experience with the performance of this rom was great no problems whatsoever and if you're willing to see the android and geekbench score here are the android and geekbench score of this rom also with the cpu stress test on this particular build so let me in the comments what do you guys think about the pixel extended rom version 4.7 i feel yes this definitely gives you a pixel kind of experience but some of the things are seeming like very limited if you have used the latest builds of Evolution X and stuff. But otherwise, it's a good ROM, no problems whatsoever. You can definitely try it if you want to. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share this video with your friends if you feel like. This is Tito from Kerry and Dick signing off for today. And please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.